Hi, my name is Masayoshi Max Fukuhara, and this is my life. Just like anybody else's, my childhood has been full of momentary spirits of both happiness and trials and tribulations, but I'm thankful for it all. Karate was my first sport, and it shaped a great part of my identity. Coming home with bloody knuckles was only the surface of karate, as it taught me the core Japanese values of integrity, respect, discipline, and perseverance that is still instilled in my blood to this day ever since I put on the belt. Being raised in a Japanese household, my parents enrolled me to Asahi, a Saturday Japanese school. Although dreadful at first, together with friends that are now lifelong, I honed my bilinguality to perfection. At the age of six, I brought my dual identity to Tokyo, but it wasn't a typical summer vacation for me. I became an annual exchange student for my local elementary and middle school for a total of nine summers. Immersing myself in the authentic culture taught me valuable lessons that I cherish to this day. On the contrary, going to normal American school was more of a difficulty for me as English became my second language and I was put into ESL. Making friends was challenging, but I learned to get out of my comfort zone as both Japanese and English soon became my first languages. The biggest turning point of my life occurred the summer 7th grade. As I climbed the fence with Kai, my day one homie, for a shortcut to get home after a long day of playing Pokemon Go, the barbed tip stabbed into my right calf and I fell from the sharp fence. My entire leg was peeled open and I could see my veins in my right calf. The next six months felt like forever. I couldn't do the little everyday things without help. Fast forward three surgeries later, it was only after my first steps walking that I realized my fragility. I made a full recovery only because of everyone's support. Friends, doctors, my parents, and Kai, who had been there through thick and thin. Hearing that I may never walk again, those people saw me at my lowest low, but did everything they could to cheer me up. I was reminded of my vulnerability and that one is only alive with the support of others. If there's one message to summarize my present, it is that love is everything. Ever since my tragic injury, I was reminded of the importance of family. Family is someone who is there for you and will love you unconditionally. Things do get hard, as my father is not home over half the year each year and my mother cannot speak English, but together, any obstacle can be overcome. Without them, I would not be where I am, nor would I be who I am. And most obviously, my friends. Without them, nothing would be possible. I've made countless number of new friends that always made me laugh. Although many of them will come and go, I'm thankful, no matter how little our interactions could have been. <laughs> On the contrary, I've also met special people that have stuck around for what seems like my entire life. I think we can all agree that the pandemic was a significant turning point in our lives. During that downtime though, it was grueling to stay mentally motivated, but I picked up surfing as a hobby, started lifting, conditioning, and training twice a day to keep myself busy. Sometimes it's important to invest in yourself to make yourself happy, instead of trying to please others. So surfing was fun and all, but soccer has been the biggest part of my recent years, but I didn't get the chance to play competitively until freshman year. While having an extremely late start, I didn't let that stop me from achieving my goals, making the Major League Soccer Academy team and becoming the only freshman on my varsity team. But I came to realize that ultimately, it wasn't really the wins or losses that mattered. It was the irreplaceable people I met. The sacrifices I made, the blood, sweat, tears, the countless hours of individual trainings I put in, it all paid off in the end. Through this sport, I met Kai Nishida and Hunter Matsukubo, who I now practically spend the entirety of my day with. Playing on the same high school and academy team, we became more than teammates, but brothers off the field, 
as KSM became my closest group of lads. Our group dynamic brought a lot of diversity to the table, Kai being Mr. Perfect with Albert Einstein level IQ and messy soccer skills, while Hunter balancing the group being the wild guy with no worries on his mind but just live in the moment and have fun. Conversations with them could be the dumbest things ever. Yo, did you get me? Nah, I got waitlist, but like waitlisting, like low key means like I got in, they just telling me to wait a little bit, you know, just no. I'm not worried because I know I got in, so there's like wait a little bit and then we'll send you the email later, you know what I mean? Like. Or sometimes the deepest and realest things. But overall, I've learned a lot from them. The future is quite scary to think about, but we must be fearless, as Kate Chopin once said. The bird that would soar above the level of plain tradition and prejudice must have strong wings. Starting this upcoming fall, I will be attending UCLA as a cognitive science major. UCLA has been my dream school, and I'm blessed and humbled to be able to study and live in the heart of LA. I plan to continue my lifelong passions and also try out new things like studying abroad, potentially in Asia or Europe, to expand my cultural horizons. All in all, these 18 years have been full of ups and downs, sometimes to the point where it felt like there was no way up, but at the end of the day, I always found a way to make things work out. With the confidence in my abilities and the support from my surrounding peers, I know that I will be able to constantly push myself to become the best version of me. Although bittersweet that this chapter of my life is coming to an end, I can't wait to see what the future holds for me in this world of endless possibilities. With that being said, thank you for listening to my journey. This is Max Rukahara, signing out.